Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something really exciting to talk about. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short. You know when you watch movies like Her or Ex Machina and you see these super smart machines? Yeah, it's sort of like that. But did you know in 2023, stuff got real with the arrival of ChatGPT? I know, I know, AI sounds like a buzzword that's just thrown around, but hold on one sec because it's not just hype. We're actually using different types of AI every single day, so often that we don't even notice it. AI is still pretty new and some super smart people like data scientists are trying to categorize what types of AI are out there and what we might see in the future. So hang tight because we're going to go through the basics and then dive into different types of AI that you should definitely know about. All right, are you excited? Because I am. Let's stick around for this learning journey. <laughs> So let's kick off with a million dollar question. What is AI or what is artificial intelligence? Think of AI as a computer program that's smart enough to learn by itself. Yeah, you heard that right. It doesn't need us to keep telling it what to do. It figures stuff out on its own. Now, AI is a huge field. It's not just about making robots or something. It's about teaching computers to do stuff that we humans can do, like recognizing a face in a photo or understanding what somebody is saying. And guess what? There are even special types of AI like deep learning or machine learning that get really good at solving problems by studying lots and lots of data. By the way, if you'd like us to make a video on each of these, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment in the section below. This is super important for things like data analytics or data science, which are all about making sense of huge amounts of information. If you're curious about the nitty gritty, like what's the difference between machine learning and deep learning, don't worry, we've got a blog post about that. I'll drop a link down in the description below. Okay, so now that we've got a grip on what AI actually is, let's talk about the different types. You ever wonder if machines can think or feel like we do? Well, there are some people that find this kind of amazing and others who find this kind of scary. Either way, people have been thinking about this question for a long, long time. So experts have come up with two main ways to classify AI. One's based on what AI can do, and the other is based on how smart it is. Let's firstly dive into the first one, functional types of AI. Now this type breaks AI down into four different categories. First up is reactive machines. These guys are super straightforward. They can't remember stuff or learn from the past. They're like that friend that gives you the same advice over and over again because they can't remember what they told you last week. For example, there's this famous chess playing computer called Deep Blue. It beat a Russian chess grandmaster back in the 90s. All it did was react to the game based on a set of rules. Nothing more, nothing less. And guess what? This sort of tech is everywhere now. You know Netflix recommends shows because say you've watched Friends? That's a reactive machine in action. It's so normal that we don't even think about it. Okay, onto the second type of AI in our functional classification. We call this one limited memory AI. Think of limited memory AI as the smarter cousin of reactive machines. These AIs can actually remember stuff and then learn from it. It's like that friend that remembers that you're allergic to peanuts and then stops offering you Snickers. They've remembered. Unlike reactive machines, they can change their approach based on past data. But don't get it twisted because they're not really thinking. They're just incredibly good at using the data collected to make better decisions. Now, these types of AI are awesome for data science because they can crunch numbers way faster than humans can. Ever heard of DeepMind's AlphaGo? That's a limited memory AI. Let's talk examples. So you've already heard of ChatGPT. It's a huge deal. It got like a million users within five days. Why? It's really good at talking like a human because it's based on this massive database of human conversations. And it's not just chatbots. Think about self-driving cars. These cars are like rolling computers that use limited memory to dodge obstacles or slam on the brakes if a child, for instance, runs into the street. Other cool stuff includes image recognition like Google Lens or some translation software. So yeah, limited memory AI is kind of a big deal right now. So next up in our AI journey is something super fascinating. Theory of mind AI. Yeah, it sounds fancy, right? Okay, let me break this down. Theory of mind is something that we do without even thinking. Ever wondered how your buddy might react if you prank them? Or even how your grandma would feel if you missed her birthday? Now that is theory of mind, so you're putting yourself in their shoes. We humans are naturally good at this, but computers, mm, not so much. They're still learning, or more accurately, researchers are still figuring out how to teach them. So you're probably thinking, why do we even need to have 
have computers, to have theory of mind. Well, picture an AI therapist that can actually feel what you are going through. Or picture a customer service bot that knows when you're feeling frustrated and to give you an instant refund. See, the first wave of AI got everybody hyped up. Self-driving cars, game playing bots, you name it, we all got very excited. But there was still a bunch of things going wrong. So algorithms messing up, self-driving cars, sometimes crashing, there were lots of problems. So while AI is cool, many believe for it really to be safe and efficient, it has to understand us, not just what we say, but also how we feel. There is a flip side though. If AI gets too good at reading us, could it potentially manipulate us? Yeah, it's a bit of a sci-fi plot, but it's definitely something to think about. Though let's remain optimistic, shall we? Before we get there, let's hope that some safety measures or government policy fall in place. Okay, now buckle up because we're gonna delve into the realm of science fiction. So everyone, meet self-aware AI. Ever had a moment where you sat down and thinking, where am I? <laughs> where am I? Who am I? <laughs> Ever had a moment in life where you've thought, who am I and what am I doing in life? That's self-awareness. You're aware of your thoughts, emotions, and even your own awareness. Now, what if a machine could do that? Imagine a computer having its own aha moment. Weird, right? But also fascinating. While theory of mind AI would allow a computer to understand the human emotions and thoughts, self-aware AI would have its own feelings and thoughts. Think of it as the AI stepping up from being a good mimic to actually having its own inner world. It's like this leap from artificial intelligence to, get this, artificial consciousness. Notice how I keep saying would or theoretically? That's because we're not there yet. It's pure imagination. In fact, the concept of a machine being self-aware kind of blows our understanding of neuroscience and computing right out of the water. Ever watch movies like Ex Machina or iRobot? This level of AI is what those films are all about. It's the doomsday or dystopian AI scenario. You know, where AI becomes self-aware and actually finds out that humans are the problem? But hey, don't lose sleep over it because we are still a long long way from making this science fiction a reality. Self-aware AI isn't something that you'll see anytime soon, but wow, if it does happen, it will be a game changer. You see, a self-aware computer will be like a window into how consciousness actually works. And that's the big question that even neuroscientists are still scratching their head about. Imagine an AI that's not just processing data, but actually feeling things and making its own choices based on its own beliefs. This is pretty mind-blowing. But hold on a sec, creating a machine that's aware of itself isn't all roses it actually brings up some pretty serious ethical questions. Like if a machine knows it's gonna be shut off forever, could it maybe stop this happening? Now I know this is really heavy stuff, especially for a YouTube video. So before anyone builds self-aware AI, we need to make sure that we've sat down and really think about the ethics. After all, we don't really want to start the robot apocalypse, right? And there you have it. That wraps up our guide to functional AI types. But hang on because we're not done yet. Now let's dig into another way to categorize AI. It's called the Capability Classification System and it's super interesting. Let's jump into the capability way of looking at AI. First off, artificial narrow intelligence. Don't let the name fool you. This AI is a superstar in its own league. It's fantastic at doing one thing, like playing chess or identifying spam emails. Yes, everything from your Netflix recommendations to actually ChatGPT2 is based on AI. It's like an expert that only knows one subject, but knows it very, very well. Next up, the big leagues like AGI, artificial general intelligence. This one is like the ultimate multitasker. Imagine a computer that can actually chat with you about music and help you with your math homework or help you put together a new recipe, all without breaking a sweat. How do you know if you're talking to an AGI? Well, it would have to pass the Turing test. That's a quiz made by a genius called Alan Turing. It checks if a computer can think like us humans. Pretty wild, hey? Now brace yourself because we're entering the realm of science fiction's science fiction. Artificial super intelligence or ASI. If you thought AGI was impressive, ASI takes it to a whole new level. We're talking about a machine that's not just smarter than your average person, it's exponentially smarter. Think Einstein on steroids or Stephen Hawking's times a thousand. An ASI can process data at mind-boggling speeds, make decisions with a split-second precision, and here's the kicker, it can evolve and improve itself. Remember that concept of a technological singularity that we spoke about earlier? ASI is the likely outcome. Some people believe that we'll achieve it by 2050, while others are slightly more skeptical that we will never pass machines which can reason, essentially. Now let's not get too carried away with the doomsday scenarios from sci-fi movies just yet. We're talking decades, if not centuries, before we get close to ASI. So no need to fret because we've got plenty of time to figure things out. All right, folks, that was a whirlwind tour of artificial intelligence, wasn't it? We've peeked into what 
what AI can do today, but also delved into the possibilities of what AI can do in the future. Let's be real for a second. AI of today is pretty much a prediction whiz. It's got a knack of analytics that you wouldn't believe, but that's actually just the tip of the iceberg. Imagine a future where computers might be smarter than the average person. This is actually pretty mind blowing. So here's the deal. AI is this fast growing field, which isn't just about tech. It's about reshaping our world. We're talking big game changers, especially in the fields of data analytics or machine learning. Curious to learn more? Trust me, there is a lot, lot more to learn. I've dropped some links to some recent articles that will take you a lot deeper into this fascinating world. So what do you think about AI? Is it going to be our best friend or is it something that we actually need to keep an eye on? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining me on this awesome journey through the land of AI. If you found this interesting, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-bending topics. For more information about AI, check out this video that my colleague Tom did about ChatGPT. You'll find information about what ChatGPT is and how it's used on a day-to-day -day basis. Hope you enjoy it. Click right here and I'll join you in the next video. Like recognizing a face in a photo or telling somebody what to do. Tell them. <laughs> yeah, sounds fancy, right? <laughs>